Okay, so we're back. Um, the glue's gone off. I mean, it didn't have a choice really because it's frozen solid. It's a degree. One degree it is. So what we're going to use is this handsaw. We'll scrape the dried off glue off the board and then that will give us our nice base to build our walls. What we're going to do now, we're going to build this back wall in place on the floor. We're going to stand it up. I'll show you how we construct the back wall. Um, then we're going to do the side walls and we're also going to put the front wall in with the steel as well. So there's going to be some three metre bifolds there. Um, can't remember off the top of my head, but I'm sure they're all running that way. And this back wall and this side wall, obviously, when we stand it up, it'll just want metal cladding, which we'll be able to do from the wall there as well. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to get the walls up and get them all away speed and vapor barriers as well. Thank you. Right, so we're going to make the back wall first. We're using 4B2 CLS, uh, Canadian Lumber Standard. That's what CLS stands for. <laughs> it is, yes. <laughs> so what we're going to do, I will measure the back wall, which basically you just want to measure the floor, um, which is, John, it's 4,775. So it's 4,775. What you'll do then, you'll cut two 4B2s at that length, because we've got some at 4.8 and we've got some at 3 metres. Um, I'll explain the three metre ones in a minute, but the 4.8s will be for the base and the top plate. So it'll cut two at that length, at the same length, and then we'll cut the wall studs. Now this is a little bit different to what we normally do. Come Michael, you can come around. It's a little bit um, different to what we normally do because he's, he's going to use it as a gym, so he needs extra head height. So he's applied for his planning and he's been approved. So we can make this bigger than the normal 2.5, which we normally do. Right, so that's your 4B2 CLS. Um, it finishes at 89 mil that way, and it finishes at 38 mil that way. It's got rounded edges, so it's good to handle as well. CLS stands for Canadian Lumber Standard. So that's what we're going to use, 4B2 for the base and for the um, uprights as well. So what we're going to do now, we're going to put these together. What I'm going to do now is, is put them together, and then I'll run my tape along there and mark 400 centres for the wall. Right, so we've got we've got a bottom plate and a top plate. I've put them together. What we're going to do then, I'm going to run my tape along and I'm going to mark 400 centres. What we're doing, we're going to put our uprights at 400 centres, which will then, when we plaster board, they'll be right. But as I've said before in previous videos, the OSB is imperial measurements, so we'll have to rip that down to 1.2 because that finishes at uh, 4 foot, so it's 20 mil too big. But the plasterboards, that's what we want to sit right. So what I'll do now is, so I've marked them all along. That's your bottom plate and your top plate. So what I'll do now, I'll go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Adam will cut me 13 uprights. What we've done, we've set the depth, uh, the length gauge on the miter saw. Um, it's a DeWalt stand, absolutely spot on bit of kit. Bit of kit. We're using a DeWalt 305 mil saw, John, is it? 305 mil saw, so that's set there, that's locked off. So every time Adam puts a timber on there, as long as he puts it on, whoa! As long as he puts it on gentle, then every timber will be the right length. So that's what he'll do. He'll start cutting all them now, he'll throw them across. What we're gonna do, we're gonna fix them. We're gonna use these Pazlod IM350 pluses. Um, the good, it's starting to get that time of year though where it's cold and the gas will freeze, so we may jump onto the Milwaukee's. We are using, We are using 90 mil ring cut nails in them as well. We'll put three in the bottom, three in the top on each stud. So you can see there, he's holding the timber centre with the centre line. He's going to put three nails in there. So there you can see, they've almost built the back frame there. Uh, three nails in top, three nails in bottom, 4 by 2 CLS. Right, so because normally what we do, we cut these down to height, but because this is a bigger build than what we normally do, um, they're going on in full sheets. But like I said before, um, the boards are imperial measurements, which means they're four foot, John, which means they're four foot rather than the 1.2, which a plaster board is. So what I've done, I've set the gauge on this circular saw and I'm going to rip the boards down to 1.2 then. That there 
there then becomes a 1.2 board. Um, John will keep rolling now and I'll show you how we're going to then set this wall up so that we can get it square. Is somebody on a nail gun, yeah? Right, because the board is square, what we can do then, we can get the wall square using the board to square the wall. So what I'll do is I'll drop that on there. They're just loading up a nail gun and I'll show you what we're going to do then. So what we need to do is, does somebody want to get to the bottom of this please? What I'll do there, I don't know if John can see, I've got that dead in line with the corner there. So I'll put a nail in there, thank you. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to set the depth gauge on this Pazload IM350 Plus. We are using 63mm ring cut nails for these. So what I'll do now, I'll get that one there. So it's still a little bit proud, so I'll just adjust the depth gauge a little bit more on that. There, and that should sink in. So what Michael's going to do now, he's going to get that side, which we know is square, it's manufactured square. He's got it dead in line with that timber there. So I will then... fix that down there so we know that's square now can you see how that there is massively stepped so what we need to do now is push it to me a bit Michael let's get that so it's dead in line too much Michael there so that's dead in line now so when that board is then fixed when that board is then fixed then the next one will go on there we'll do the same again we'll get that line dead square there and get that one dead square there and then that full wall will be a perfect square then. Um, what I've forgotten to do on this one, I'll just do it now. Um, what you need to do is, because obviously I can't see the timbers now. Somebody got a straight edge for us. So I'm just going to mark. It's easier to scribe it when it's up on the bench. Um, I'm just going to mark where the 400 centres are on that. I'll show you in a minute, are you there John? Yeah. I'll show you in a minute how we would do it with a finger scribe, which is a lot easier than this. Michael, do you want to run down there and nail that for me please? Thank you. Michael, you know at the bottom there, yeah. just don't go past so there's no nails you know, hanging down. Yeah, you can run end off that. So what we're doing, we're nailing approximately every 300, like I say, with the ring cut nails. What Simon's done there, he's put a square on his gauge where the bottom of the timber is because you don't want no nails sticking out the bottom, which are going to then hold the floor, hold the wall off the floor a little bit. Right, so John, if you run over here, I'll just show you how we scribe this. Adam's just now run this down to uh, 1.2 wide, which is the metric measurement. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to get 400 on there, 400 on there. I've now locked my finger and tape there. I'm going to get my marker on there and I'm going to drag it down. And that there just saves doing it the other way. And I'm going to do the same on now with 800 because we know we're 400 centers. So that there then gives marking Marking up for it, so if Adam just wants to carry that round, keep it going, John. He's still going, yeah? And we'll do the same with this. We'll get the corner right, so get the corner right, Simon. Tell me when you're good. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah. So he's popped one in the corner. What we know now, we need to make sure that this line is right here. Again firing every 300 mil and then what we'll do then you can see Michael then is going to square the wall there are we good Michael or yeah. yeah so what will happen then that wall will be completely square so when we stand it up it'll come up on the back wall and rather than being wrapped left or right it'll be completely square that way so all we'll need to do then is plumb it that way so what we'll do, we'll carry on with this, we'll get that wall done, then we'll stand, uh, we're going to breathe up a membrane it, and then we're going to put some slate battens on as well. The board's hanging over there, which is absolutely fine. What it'll do, it'll sit past the grey floor in there. You can see that, John? See, it's hanging over there. So what'll happen is that's, oh, that CLS will sit there, and then the OSB will just drop down there nice. 
Right, so that's the back wall, it's OSB'd. Um, what we're going to use then, we're going to put a breathable membrane. Basically, it's a roofing felt. Um, it allows the building to breathe, but it doesn't allow moisture to ingress. <laughs> so what we're going to do, obviously that's the bottom of the wall. So what you need to do is felt it bottom up. So any water that runs down the wall runs down onto that one and then down onto that one. Not that it's going to, but just in case. Adam, are you dead flush up bottom down there? there right so i'm just going to tack it into place with a couple of these twist nails if it's a windy day you might have to put a few in it because it'll go all over on you um what we're going to do then is get the top piece on and then we'll put some slate buttons on which will carry the cladding Right, so what we'll do, we'll put another breathable membrane on there. So that'll be the back with its full breathable membrane on. Then Simon's going to cut some, basically all they are is tantalised roofing battens. They're a 2 by one button. Uh, they're pressure treated as well. So what we'll do, we'll cut them at eight foot, which is our wall height. And we'll then fix them to every upright timber, which we'll be able, I'll show you how we're going to do that in a minute as well. Is it, just pull that out there, Adam, look, it's ripped there. So that there, that's the full back wall with its breathable membrane on. What Michael will do, Michael will trim that off now. Are we good to go there? You happy, Michael? Michael? Yeah. Just put a couple of nails in just to hold that. Right, so the, again, Imperial and Metric. The slate button's coming at 4.8, which isn't quite 16 foot. So it doesn't matter that they're not the right length. Um, I'll tell you why in a minute. So what we're going to do, we're going to split them in half and make sure that we've got the same length on each side. So Adam, go to that end of there. What Adam will do, he'll get that flush with the outside of the timber and flush with the top, which it is now, Adam, is it, yeah? Right, and then what Michael will do then, once he's loaded some 63s into the nail gun, although it seems to be 90, sorry, yeah, 90, the calm down. Um, what he'll do then is come down and nail these and I'll show you how we'll get them in line as well. Are we struggling, Michael? Yeah. Why? No, 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 you're done. What, what did you put in half, half a strip? Yeah, I can't find any more. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here. do you want to put in some <laughs> more? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, wrong oh. way. <laughs> under pressure. He's under pressure, isn't he? Rolling. Come on, Michael, you can do this. Serious. Give it a shake now. That's it, that's the baby. Are we good? Yeah. No, you're nailing. Right, so what we're going to do, Adam's... Are we going, John, yeah? yeah? So what we're going to do, Adam's flush at the top. We can see we're flush there. Michael, when you... Michael, go down. He'll nail them approximately every 300. Um, you can see there, Michael set the depth gauge on that. No, that's wrong, isn't it? There we go. To full depth. Um, they have been recently serviced, these, but because it's starting to get cold now, the pass loads don't like the cold because the gas starts to freeze, so we'll make sure we go around with a hammer and punch them nails in. But let me show you how we're going to line these up now. Obviously, we can't see where our timbers are anymore because this felt has now covered it. Adam, get back up there. So what Adam's going to do is John just goes around there. Adam's going to locate where the nails are. You see where the nails are, Adam? He's then going to put that central... He's then put that central, it's flush at the top. What I'm going to do exactly the same at the bottom. Look for the nails, which I've found. I've got the timber central. Michael, don't nail past there because there's nothing there. So you can come at least four or five inches up. Yeah, we're good. So when Michael now nails that, what will happen then? The 90mm nail will go through the OSB and into the framework, which is what we want. So what we're going to do now, we're going to go across, pop all them on. Look for the centre. We good, Adam? Yeah. Okay, we're good. <laughs> Michael will carry on nailing them. Um, so what we'll do, we'll do the full wall like that, and then we're going to, they're vertical battens, then we're going to put some lateral battens on, which will allow airflow behind the building. And I'll show you what we're going to do with them as well. I'm good, Adam. Yeah. Right, so we're going to double batten this. Um, it's not particularly important on this one because we're putting a metal clad on the back, but if it's a timber frame, then what you want is so a timber clad rather. So let's say your cladding goes that way, so the air can flow up there, but it can also cross flow as well. So when your cladding gets wet, it naturally dries out because you've got air flow, which will go that way, 
and then that way. If you don't do it that way, let's imagine that these aren't there and you've just got horizontal battens, then your air's trapped there because you've got cladding there and your air can't go anywhere. This allows it to go under and across and under and across and all the way, so you've got full airflow behind. So what we're gonna do, we are gonna measure six inches up off the bottom of the OSB. You done that, yeah? Yeah, how far over that? What? I'll, I'll, I'll get it flush at this end. Right, so he's measured six inch up. What we're gonna do now, um, are you good, yeah? yeah. So he's, again, he's gonna use 90 mil nails. He's gonna nail through there. Adam, jump over here with the nail gun, will you? Adam's gonna jump on this Milwaukee nail gun. Um, John, spec on Milwaukee nail gun. Do you wanna come over so you can hear your microphone? You'll not spec off top of your head, won't you? Really fast. <laughs> so really fast. the spec on this Milwaukee nail gun is it's really fast. It's gasless, which obviously at this cold temperature is going to be a bonus. The Gen 2. It's the Gen 2 one. Um, you can get an extendable magazine, which will be obviously a bonus. Zero so you can see there, zero ramp up. It's not an issue whatsoever. These pass loads have been serviced just at Christmas. And you can see there, look, see how you have to press it twice to get it going. Uh, that's the problem with a pass load from the winter time. So what we're going to do now, we are going to use these 400 spacers, Michael, at that end, please. So we're going to use a 400 spacer, frozen slate like that, Dan Adam. And we are going to use them as the spacers. I'm going to keep that flush at that end. And what they'll do then is go across and nail them all the way along. You can see there, I put the spacer in the middle, just if there's any sag. We'll then drop the next one on as well. Like I say, I'm gonna keep that flush there because that's the back corner of the wall, so that's flush. Adam, you can nail that. So there you go, the Milwaukee, I think it retailed at about 700 quid would that be right john no yeah about so. yeah about 700 quid it's not mr beat there even though it's cold and you've got the added bonus of not having any gas the only downside to the milwaukee is it's big and it's heavy and it's cumbersome but i'm sure it's something you can get used to he's run out of nails what we've actually done as well um on our second fixed pass loads i've bought two recently they've both gone back for repair within six months which is obviously not good. So what me and John have done, we've invested in a Milwaukee second fix 18 gauge as well, which we'll showcase when we do some cladding. Again, so these are 400 spacings on these. You can see there the Milwaukee's not missing a beat, far quicker than the Paz Lord. What we'll do then, we'll go for the last baton, which has fallen lovely for us on this one. I mean, that's a good little gap there we've got at the top. Michael, you happy? Yeah. So once again, I'll explain the need for double battening. Now imagine, let's say you're cladding, it's all vertical like this. If your cladding was horizontal, then we'd have battened the other way around. So it doesn't matter which way around, it depends what your final fixture is, whether it's vertical or horizontal. In this case, the cladding will be vertical. It's going to be metal, so double battening wasn't necessary, but we're going to do it anyway. Um, but what will happen now, so let's say your cladding runs like that. The air can flow like that. It can then flow into this bay or that bay, under there, 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 and you've got complete airflow throughout the building. What we're going to do, Michael's just going to whip... Are you the tool on, Michael? Yeah. He's going to whip the ends of these off because the wall is slightly under 4 eight. so rather than cutting them on the chop saw, he's just going to whip them off with a circular saw now. It's a Makita circular saw. All our tools, all my tools rather, are Makita. John's opted for Milwaukee, but he likes to leave them at home and keep them in a little shed. Don't you, John? Uh, all your Milwaukee's at home. With his, with his three year warranty, and even after three years, it'll be brand new, no, never been used. Well. All at home in a little shed, Send and he's, he strokes them at night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they'll break after three years and you won't use them, but then warrant will be gone. So what we're gonna do now, that full wall is a perfect square. Um, there's 
five of us here now, it's not going to be an issue to lift this up. So what we'll do, we'll lift that up into place. That OSB that's hanging over there will drop down the side of the 22mm Erga Protect. Michael, just have a look under there. We're just going to make sure there's no nails sticking out that we've missed. That will keep the wall from going down tight to the bottom of the OSB. Michael says we're good. So we're going to go for it. Michael, say hello. This is Michael. We call it well, we call him multi-tool because when he started, he says if I was a tool, I would be a multi-tool. Didn't you, Michael? Right, so what we're gonna do now, John, if you can just look under here, we're gonna slide this just so that we, what we don't want is it to fall down the back because we will have to lift it back out then. Right, so you can see mine, you see, John, we'll have a look right at my corner. Yeah, 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 look at my corner there. So you can see I'm pushing up now, which means my OSB is still on the grey. So I'm just going to nudge it forward a little bit. Still doing it. You want to move them? There you go, it's dropped down into place. So what we're going to do now is just pull it back to us. There we go. You happy there? Right, John, what I'm going to do, have you got the wall, guys, yeah? What I'm going to do, I'm just going to slide it towards them. Are you good, John? Too much, in it? Give it a kick, Michael, it won't go with your hand. What I will do then, I'll get the Milwaukee, because it won't let me down, and I'll go along and nail this to the floor. Ooh, John. There you go. Milwaukee's let us down, first day out. <laughs> They're in the flip on it. Right, all right, so we'll leave that there for a minute. We'll get on the pad load. Which Adam is showcasing. What he's going to do, he's going to nail there, nail there, nail there, nail there. So it's a double nail. You can see that obviously it's cold, it's gas, it doesn't want to fire. Always have this problem with these at this time of year. Right, so. Because we OSB'd the wall and we got the wall square, so obviously the wall is not plumb that way, but because we OSB'd it and it's sat on the square base, then it's plumb that way. So what we need to do now, we're gonna get our side wall in over there, which will then brace that up and square it. It's not gonna fall though, we're absolutely fine. Um, so what, what they're doing now, have you cut one then, Michael? Cut two, please. So we're going to build this back wall here um, and I'll show you how we're going to overlap the OSB so it drops down the side. Right, so this is the side wall. So what we've done, we've overlapped the OSB there. So when the side wall butts up to this wall, that distance there is that distance there. So it will lock into place. So if, if you can imagine, that wall goes that way. So the CLS will be there. So that will slide in and then we can fix that to that wall and also fix that upright timber there to the end timber there as well. But I'll show you that going in anyway. This wall's getting clad on metal on the back and the side, what you don't see. So because we're tight for space on there, we've just single battened this because obviously you don't need the airflow with metal because it's not going to need drying out like timber will be. So we've gone horizontally with our slate battens there. Um, you can see the overlap just there for the OSB. So that'll pop into place when that wall goes up. So what we're going to do now, um, there's just two of us on site now because we've had to go past concrete another job. So me and Michael are going to lift this wall up now and we're going to get it fixed and that will be the back and side walls up. Right, so you can see the side wall there. Michael's holding that in place. What we're going to do now, we've lifted that up. We're going to slide that in there. So what will happen now, let me just move that strap out of the way. What will happen now is that wall will push up against that. That OSB then will go on the outside of there and it will get fixed to that. And also that wall will get fixed to that. So what Michael's going to do now, he's going to slide it up. Can you slide it, Michael? A bit more, mate? There we go, lovely. So what we'll do now, we'll fix that. And once that's fixed together, you see there the back wall, once that's fixed to the front, the side wall, sorry, then that they will be both plumb and that corner will be rigid then. So Michael there, I don't know if you can see his hands at the top. Just wiggle your hands, Michael. There we go. Michael's going to hold the corner. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to nail through that CLS into that CLS, which will then tie that wall together. So that's the back wall and the side wall up. Um, I've tied them together now. 
So that, that's nice and secure. Um, you can see the height difference in there. You've got a good eight foot internal, which is 2.4, which is what the customer wanted. That's why he's applied for planning. Um, so what we're gonna do now, we're gonna drop this other side wall in there and then we'll do the front as well. So we'll do exactly the same. We'll make our frame, we'll let the OSB hang over and I should be able to give you a better detail on this corner then when the OSB slides into there and you'll be able to see that going in nice. So what he's doing, he's cut that floor timber there. That's the bottom rail. He'll now cut the top rail and I'll then put the uprights in, same as that wall, always be the same, and then we'll go from there. Right, so this is the other gable end wall. So again, the OSB's cut long, that's gonna slide over. I'll just go to the outside and show you that. So what will happen is going to slide in, Michael. There we go. So what will happen now, we'll hold that in situ in right place and we'll nail it just like we did the other one. Right, so what's happening now, um, this is the front wall obviously here. So we're going to have some three meter bifolds. So over there, I don't know if you can see that. I've marked on the floor there. There we go. So that's that 300 mil wall there. We've put a double five by two in there. That's going to carry the steel, so we've got a double one at the front and a single one at the back. This wall here then again is for this, this side over there. Um, again, we've got a shorter distance there, which will be a 300 bearing for the seal to sit on. And then the wall steps up 160 mil to account for the height of the steel. Um, I'll show you what I mean once it goes up there. Again, so what we're using on the front wall, we're using 5 by 2 it's C24 is this timber only because that's what they had. We normally use C16, it's just a grade of timber, um, but this is C24, this one. So we're using 5 by 2 simply because the steel is 80 mil thick, we need to sit the steel on and we also need to get some timber on which we can fix the roof to and also fix the plasterboard to, but I'll explain that as we go along. Right, so the front walls are up there, we've got a drop down there for the steel to sit on, uh, just show you that. There's a 300 bearing, so we've got a double trimmer there and then a single one, and the steel will sit on there, and likewise over there. What we're going to do now is we put a string line on the front. I don't know if you can see that there. Um, what we've done, we've put one screw in there. So Michael has cut three blocks. They're all the same size. So he will take one over that end. I will take one at this end, and I will put it in like such. Are you in, Michael? Right, and the purpose of that is we obviously want this wall to run straight through, straight down there. So he'll get that block and can you see that now? Just a bit slowly, Michael. There you go. Can you see the wall is sticking out? So you're just going to tap that back just so that that wood just glides, just glides just past it. And then what we'll do... We will screw that down there, we'll fix that, we'll do the same on that other nib of a wall and we'll know then that then they're running through screw and uh, true and straight. Right, so because we know we plumbed the walls that way because we've used those eight before sheets, so we know they're right. Michael, just give me a second before you cut them, okay? So when we join that to that, then we know because that's right that way and we've plumbed that that way. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna put some rakers in and we're gonna brace this building so that these corners are right and then we can then fix them in situ there and they'll be fixed to them. And then what we'll do, we'll put a couple of braces on there and that will mean then our full building is square, plumb and braced. And then we can put our steel in. Um, what I've done, my mind's still on the other job. Um, so I've not made the front wall. Well, I have made it to the front wall, I've just not made the upstand big enough. So what we're gonna do now is make a ladder frame to go across the top, which in fact will help us when we put the roof on and we won't have to use our outside jo joist hangers. Okay, so that's where we're at now. Um, we're gonna put some braces in here. So Michael's gonna cut the 4 by 2 we've got left over. He's gonna cut 45 on both ends. The 45 will sit flat on there. 45 will sit flat on there and then we can brace that wall, which means then once that wall's braced, we can then fix that and then we will brace that that way as well. We'll do exactly the same over there, and then the building will be square, plumb, and ready to accept the steel. All right, Michael. Now, what you can see there, because it's cut a 45, that's sat flat on the floor, and it's sat flat to that, but I'll show you a little bit of a close-up about that in a minute. Right, so there you see, he's cut 45s on both ends, so that's gonna sit nice on there like that, and 
it will also sit flat on the floor. What it'll do then, it'll get the level on that and I'll hold that and I'll push it backwards and forwards until that wall's plumb with the level. It wants to be 100% plumb because when you put these doors in, you want to make sure that them uprights just there are dead plumb as well. Right, so what Michael's going to do now, he's going to hold the spirit level. Like hold it on, on the wall there, Michael. And what I will do then, I will push it backwards and forwards until he tells me it's 100% plumb. And then I'll screw it to the floor. Too fast. Too fast. To you or me? To you. Bang on. 100%? 100%. Right, so what he's done there, he's double checked it, it's 100% plumb, so we know that wall now is plumb, it's fixed, it's not going nowhere, so what we can do now is fix that wall to there, which will mean that leg will be plumb as well. Right, Michael, can you just hold that flush there at the top for me? So, because that side wall is plumb, then this front wall there should be plumb, which it is in fact plumb. Right, so what we'll do now is, Michael will put a timber across there, and we'll just make sure that that's plumb then as well so right Michael put the level on the front there so Michael will put the level on the front now and we'll do the same as the side wall we'll push it backwards and forwards Michael it wants to be a hundred percent plumb you want it plumb because obviously your doors are going in off this to, me. to you to me. More. a bit more just a fraction Yes, go. Right, so once obviously because there's a chance it might slip on the screw. So once you've screwed it, make sure it's dead plumb. If it's not, redo it until you get it 100% right. And so I'll just show you, there's the opening for the door. So what you want to just check is when you've got them, make sure there, I don't know, can you see that? There we go. So it's dead plumb. Um, likewise with that one there and then when the doors go in what I'll do is I'll double check though what we do we leave 20 mil clearance to get the doors in so the doors are three meters what we'll leave is 3020 mil and I'll just double check it at the top there to make sure we've got the same or very similar anyway and then we know the doors are going to glide in right so we use a hollow steel beam to span our doors and take the weight of the roof it's it's 80 mil it's 160 mil that way and it's five mil thick um, what we're going to do, we've marked it for the length we need to put in there. We're going to cut it with this 9 inch ankle grinder. Obviously sparks, a lot of danger, cutting wheels, so you want gloves and your glasses on as well. And what we'll do then, we'll fill the inside of the beam. I don't know if you can see the other end there. We'll fill the inside of the beam with rock wool, which um, obviously it's not complete cut. You've got cold bridging, obviously, which is going to occur um, because obviously you can't break the seal, you, uh, steel. You're going to stick... Jesus, I'll start again. Right, so obviously you're going to have cold bridging, which you can prevent, but obviously if you fill it with rock wool, you're going to prevent a lot of this, and there'll be no condensation build up inside the steel as well. So what Michael's doing now is filling the steel cavity um, with 100 mil rock wool insulation, which will help prevent some cold bridging. Won't completely sort it out, but it'll help prevent a lot of it, and he's pushing it up there with a slate button to make sure it's crammed in all the way up. So that's the steel beam gone up there. Obviously it's sat on that 300 mil wall there. It's sat on that one there as well. Um, what Michael's gonna do now, he's gonna pilot it and he's gonna put some tech screws in which will hold it down to that timber. Um, and then we'll show you how we're gonna fix it and also create a little ladder frame to go on the top of there as well. So what he's gonna do, look. There we go. He's gonna pilot that first. Right, so what we're using, we're using these the roofing, the roofing screws, uh, they're heavy duty, they've got a cutting blade on there, but what you need to do is pilot the wood first, because uh, it burns them out for some bizarre reason. So he's going to drive that into the steel, which will hold the steel to the frame. Okay, Michael. So what we're doing now, um, we've made a ladder frame to sit across the top of the steel, so obviously our roofing teams will sit on that, we're going to tech screw that ladder frame down to the top of the steel as well. Sandwich it in between it there. We're done for day. Um, so it's 4.7, it's 2.7 deep. Um, obviously he's applied for planning for this one, so it's bigger than our standard build. 
He's got a maximum of 2.9, which is loud on his planning, so we're going to fall under that anyway. So I can see it's absolutely massive. Three meter bifolds will drop this way. If John follows me in now, I'll show you how we've constructed this. So I showed you how we did the front walls. So we're at a fiber two C16 timber, which is a grade of timber. We've dropped on that steel beam in there and all. I don't know if you can see that, John. We sandwich the steam steel beam in between the OSB at the front, which will tech screw some slate batten to that to, for the cladding. We've also tech screwed that CLS there as well, so we'll be able to plasterboard that. We've filled the steel with insulation. We've put on these 45 degree props. We've screwed it, we've nailed it, we've fixed it down. It's absolutely rock solid. You're not going to get a better construction of a garden room anywhere in this country. I keep saying that, I keep looking at other people's. Um, I mean, you can see what's gone into it. What we need to do now tomorrow, we need to put a row of noggins around here. We don't put as noggins in at first because it helps with racking the walls and getting them plumb. So we'll drop some noggins in halfway along there. We're going to put the roof on tomorrow as well. And uh, depending on what the weather's like, we'll see if we can get it boarded, but I'll have to wait and see what happens there. So that, that there's the piece of steel we put in. It's 160 by 80 by five mil, uh, might even possibly eight mil, I can't remember. And we fill the inside with insulation, which helps with cold bridging. Doesn't completely solve it, but it certainly takes a lot of the cold out of it. Um, so that's it. Ooh, we're well on the way now. Um, and we'll get the roof on tomorrow, won't we? Yeah, that's it. Um, right, see you tomorrow. Thanks very much. If you'd like to like, subscribe and follow, that'd be fantastic. And we'll see you when the roof's going on.